What have we got here? The original Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 are regarded as some of the greatest games ever made, with their influence on the current horror game landscape being monumental. Yet despite this legacy, Capcom has made these games unavailable to the overall public for more than a decade now. There hasn't been any official ways to play these games for a long while, and similar to how revered games with tremendous legacy like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 were imprisoned for years and years, likewise the classic Resident Evil games are currently suffering a similar fate. Now Marvel vs. Capcom 2 alongside with all of the classic games have finally found their way to modern platforms through official means. The same cannot be said for these classic Resident Evil games. They are imprisoned, unfairly shackled to older platforms and they need to be freed. So, this is jail, huh? A place to lie down. Toilet, right in the middle of the room. <laughs> This isn't counting PC as a platform, however. There have been several ways and means to play these games for years now, and while fans have certainly kept them alive and preserved, it's up to Capcom to preserve these games, as the average person doesn't know about or has any knowledge in obtaining these modded versions. A large majority of video game players are on consoles, and I argue that having these games readily available to everyone is a necessity, especially since most people playing the remakes of 2 and 3 have little to no knowledge about the original versions. This video is a plea to Capcom, a video about the importance of game preservation, not just from dedicated fans, but also a developer's responsibility to maintain the best versions of these games possible to keep them accessible to everyone. A large part of motivation to writing the script was the newest releases of the original trilogy by GOG.com. This is a digital storefront on PC which hosts a large variety of games, and even some older titles through official means. The store's main appeal is that every game you purchase is DRM free, which means that you can make archival copies for yourself and you won't have to worry about the gray area of actually owning your copy. Capcom actually worked with the people at GOG to bring these classic games to their storefront, and while it's great to see Capcom release these games in some way in 2024, it's also hard to ignore that our Arguably better versions of these games exist and have existed for years now on PC in the forms of Rebirth, Dolphin, and Duck Station mods. Capcom also hasn't brought these games to what I feel is more important, modern consoles. There has been countless debate as to the quality of the GOG releases, and as of writing the script, Resident Evil 1 is the only game available, so here's a brief rundown of GOG's version of the game and how it compares to what you can find elsewhere. One big advantage of this release is how simple installation is compared to mods like Rebirth. Not everyone knows the intricacies around mod installs and configurations, so it's nice to get a more simplified way of just starting up the game. The FMVs overall are much lower quality and running at a lower frame rate than what you can get from the original PS1 release. While the uncensored versions of these FMVs are great, it's unfortunate that we couldn't get a better quality here. Besides some personal gripes like very dead basic graphic options, the game seems to be a solid release overall. It's Resident Evil 1 how you remember it. The issue arises with its competition. GOG is charging $10 individually for one and $25 for all three. That alone isn't a problem, I expect that. The problem is how it compares to what you can basically get for free from great fan-made mods like Rebirth, which more accurately aims to keep the PC versions as faithful as possible, giving us HD versions of the live-action FMVs, HD audio, and an overall better experience. That's not to say the GOG releases are lazy, more so that these mods exist and are competing whether Capcom likes it or not. The main issue arises with the fact that there hasn't been modern versions of these classic games to play on console for a while. It's great that GOG gave us an official release for PC, but we still need these games more than ever on modern consoles. I'd even argue it's more important for Resident Evil's legacy that these games be readily available on all platforms in order for new generations to learn about the series' roots, since everyone's playing and adoring the remakes. Game preservation is a necessity. As the world continues to get more advanced each day, game preservation shockingly seems more dire than ever. In an endless stream of remakes and remasters, the original way to play these classic games are becoming more and more lost to time. It's necessary to keep the history available for future generations, especially those who want to get into game design. There was a stat, I think it's 80% of American cinema made before 1930 is, is gone. I saw video games making the same mistakes that film was making. To me, that was scary. And with the franchise as massive as Resident Evil, it's more than necessary to keep its history available for anyone to experience. The last release of Resident Evil 1 Classic was a director's cut for PlayStation Network, which was a great way to play the original. It added features like quick saving and rewinding. However, the only downside, and this is a big downside, is that most of the music was changed. Great tracks like the basement theme were changed to this. 
Resident Evil 2 and 3 have not been so lucky, however. The last port of Resident Evil 2 and 3 was on the PlayStation Network Store for PlayStation 3 and Vita, and that was more than a decade ago. From a game preservation standpoint, it's very concerning that Capcom hasn't really tried to keep these games available to the general public. Again, GOG is a great step forward, but the average video game player most likely knows nothing about these re-releases. In fact, one can argue that Capcom is trying to rid its past and focus solely on the remakes. And while I don't really believe that myself, it's it's very sad to see people won't know just why and how all these Resident Evil remakes are so good to begin with, because its foundation was set by these classic fixed camera games. Modern audiences won't see just how important music was to creating the atmosphere of the classic games, an aspect that I heavily criticize in the remakes, with most of the soundtracks being just white noise to boost more of the diegetic sounds. The music of these classic games are very important, and modern audiences won't be able to hear these beautiful compositions at all. Take for example an integral scene in the original Resident in Evil 2, where Leon and Ada are about to go further into the depths to figure out just what's going on. The player at this point in time has spent so much time in closed off locations that seeing the outside is a huge deal. Add this with the music and beautiful night sky imagery, and you get a moment in the game that provides so much needed relief and anticipation for the horrors to come. In Resident Evil 2 Remake, this entire scene is completely taken out. The station scene has a new twist to it and it's inside rather than outside. And even if you have the original soundtrack added, the emotion isn't the same. It doesn't feel right. Modern developers can also find it important to study how these games used to play, with the sole focus on fixed camera angles and strategic resource management. I know that me and like 5 other people really enjoy the fixed camera perspective, but with modern releases of these classic games to all platforms, maybe more and more people can appreciate fixed camera angles. And maybe Capcom can be inspired to create these classic games again. <laughs> Similar to how the Zelda staff keeps both styles of Zelda alive, the top-down traditional and the focus on 3D exploration. I understand that PC is the sole solution to this issue, but I find that it's more necessary to have Resident Evil's history readily available to the general public. Similar to how Nintendo locks and chains its classic games, Capcom is doing the same with Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. We absolutely need a classic collection of some sort available on all platforms. I'm talking about PS5, Xbox, and especially Nintendo Switch. It would be great to play these on the go. They also have Code Veronica on the PSN, so I honestly don't understand why they haven't re-released these games yet. The money-making potential is off the charts, as myself and droves of people would certainly buy these games day one. Look, I know I've been rambling for a while now, but the overall point of this video is to remind you, yes you, the audience member who has listened this far, as well as Capcom, to finally start giving more of a crap about their classic games. This doesn't just relate to Resident Evil. Many classic Capcom games like Dino Crisis, Rival Schools, Final Fight 2 and 3, and their fondly remembered but widely forgotten RPG series Breath of Fire have been lost to time, but thankfully they have a huge following and deserve to be available for purchase. It's time for more and more people to start discovering all these wonderful games that I'm sure audiences would love if they just knew about it. Of course emulation and the internet as a whole exists, and anyone can research and discover older games on a larger scale, but the majority of people won't take the time out of their day to research and buy older looking games, which they then have to buy an old funky looking console that costs an arm and a leg on eBay. All right, let's just go on eBay real quick and see how much it is. Good lord! Hundred and fifty dollars? That's with the ten percent discount for mentioning Peggy's name. All right, Peggy, 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 how much is it now? And emulation as a whole is a large gray area of legal issues, so it's a lose-lose scenario. It's up to Capcom to make these classic games available to the public. It's time to start appreciating the classic Resident Evil games. GOG took a great big step forward, and here's to hoping that with the upcoming release of 2 and 3 on their storefront, this can revitalize interest on Capcom's end to finally give all consoles a proper collection for these games. Please go support these guys. It's amazing that they got a release at all, and let's hope and pray that we can get a classic collection on modern consoles in the future. Please, please Capcom, don't let these games get lost to history. No! Don't go!